So here she's asleep. She sees a crab and her color starts to change a little bit. Then she turns all dark. What do octopuses dream of? What do spiders dream of? There are scientists right now studying whether even earthworms might dream. So when animals fall asleep, they exhibit a wide range of behaviors. Those motor movements that we see in animals, like kicking of the legs, running in their sleep, um, getting into fights with imaginary enemies. This kind of evidence can also be supplemented by electrophysiological studies. We know again that many animals have brains that behave in the exact same way that our brains do when we fall asleep and when we have a, a wild dream or even. Even a nightmare, and all of the characteristics of emotional life show up in that context as well. So we know that many animals dream about the past. They dream of things from their past that are relatively neutral. They can also dream of things from the past that are inherently positive, whether that's a yummy snack, whether that is interaction with a friendly buddy. And of course, they can also dream about things that are fundamentally negative. Uh, here, we're talking about things that traumatize animals. Uh, in my book, I talk about elephants and rats. We have pretty good evidence to believe that they have nightmares. In both cases, the nightmares of these animals are tied to traumatic scenes from their past. For example, when elephants are orphaned by human poachers and they witness the murder of their mothers or their family members, those memories can follow them for a long time. And they can deregulate their sleep cycle, they can undo their sleep architectures to the point that these animals develop their own version of PTSD. I also found scientific protocols that indicate that animals, in their dreams, they create future or alternative realities with the aid of creativity and imagination. Again, all of this in the context of sleep. And I think the connection between dreams and imagination is essential. There is no dream that doesn't have an imaginative quality or character that is essentially tied to it. On a general level, I think it tells us that other animals are conscious beings who have a perspective on the world, and they have a self that is at the center of their experience. So in the same way that I experience the world as, in a very literal sense, revolving around me, so too animals have this self or I or ego that grounds their experience. Dreaming tells us a lot about emotional processing. It tells us about the connection between trauma and experience in other animals. Arguably, it tells us something about the unconscious and wish fulfillment in other creatures. And it also is a window into thinking about imagination and creativity, which for a very long time, scientists and philosophers pointed to as precisely the thing that differentiated humans from the rest of nature. And once we pay close attention to the dreams of animals, it becomes clear that we're not the only creatures who are endowed with imaginative and creative capacities. It's just that imagination and creativity can take an almost infinite number of forms in the natural world. One way in which we humans have justified our atrocious treatment of other living beings on this planet is precisely by convincing ourselves that they don't have the right kind of mind, that they don't have mental states that matter, they don't feel emotions, they don't see things, they don't remember things. And so whatever it is that we do to them in our homes, in our laboratories, in our industrial farms, doesn't matter. It's simply that we live in a culture that cultivates and maintains in us a very high degree of cognitive dissonance. And I think the really wonderful moral, imaginative mental exercise to imagine who we might be in the dreams of the animals with whom we share our life, based on how I treat the animals in my life, 
how do they dream about me? <laughs>